Joshua. Or as my granddad used to call him, Joshua. Chapter number 6. Joshua 6 and 1. I just got a little thought for you tonight. But it could change your life. The Bible says, Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, look at your neighbor and said, See, See? I have given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. Let's pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to talk to us tonight. Move in this place in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You see, there comes a time, you may be seated, there comes a time in your march for victory that you're going to face Jericho. Now, according to history, Jericho's walls were 24 feet high. If you've ever shot a basketball into a hoop, that is 10 foot high. So two basketballs high, and then some. 24 foot high. And they were so thick that they would race chariots on the top of the walls. There was houses in the walls of Jericho. For Rahab the harlot, she lived in a house on the wall. So can you imagine maybe not a house as big as some of yours, but maybe as big as some of mine. There is a house on the wall. That's how big this place is. It's between where you left Egypt and you left the world and you wandered through the desert for 40 years and God has brought you to the river Jericho and He parted the river and you crossed over on dry land and you're now in the promised land and there stands the city of Jericho. A wall that you can't see over. A wall that is imposing and frightening. But you know that God sent you here. You know that God brought you out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand. You know He has fed you 40 years in the wilderness. You know that He parted the Red Sea. You know that He gave you victory over every ite that came along. And He parted the Jordan. And now you here you are. It's time to do something. But there's a wall. I want to talk to you tonight that we are wall movers. Are you a wall mover? Or are you going to stand at gaze at a wall and all the problems that it imposes in your life. You see, they weren't allowed to go around Jericho. I mean, here we got a group of people that have, have you know, we're, we're, we're just stepping out into a new form of, of military fighting, which is, which is called siege quest. We're, we're going to siege the city. So they sent a couple of spies over there, and they got in there, and, and lo and behold, they met... Sister, uh, uh, Ray, uh, I said it a while ago. Right, Rahab. And they met her, and she told them, said, everybody's scared of you boys. Everybody is frightened. Everybody is upset. Everything in our little world is all topsy-turvy and upside down because we know that the God that you serve has wiped out the Egyptians. They've wiped out everybody that's ever faced them. And they have brought you to this place. We don't understand your God, but we know our God don't work like that. Now, I don't know what kind of stuff is between you and your promised land. 
And I don't know what kind of wall is between you and your promised land, but I do know this. My God is bigger than any wall that anybody has ever dreamed of. There was an old song years ago, we can't get over it. Can't go around it. Can't go under it. you got to come in. At you know what? God knows how to move the wall, so there is no wall to worry about. You see, within the power of the enemy, it is a fortress. The Bible says the gates of hell shall not prevail against the people of God. Has anybody ever looked at a gate and thought it was going to chase you somewhere? I mean, I've had a gate close real fast and slam on my heel. But that, that, that's, that, you know, that's an odd thing. A gate generally don't attack anybody. But in order for you to get into the total victory that you need, you've got to recognize that you are on the offense and you're on a forward march and you've got to plan to go through whatever is behind that wall. The enemy is behind the wall. The enemy has held their head down. Yet it's very imposing. 24 foot high, racing chariots on top, but they scared to death on the inside of you. Why? Because you're a child of the king. Your God is God alone. There is no greater, there is no higher, there is no more powerful than your God. And as you stand there and look at that wall, if the wall will put fear in your heart, let me tell you, you need to go back to your knees and get filled up again because the Bible says, greater is he that's within you than he that's in the world. My friend, I'm telling you today that we are wall movers. We are wall shakers. We are going to bring it down in the name of Jesus. I will not be defeated by my fear of the way that the enemy looks. I have power with Jesus Christ to declare the mountains to be moved. I have the power in Jesus Christ to declare the walls to be broken. To have everything that is built up to be torn down. Because I am victorious in Jesus. Amen. Now I'm looking at that wall. And it's tall, but it's going to fall. The devil has put a huge, powerful monstrosity of an image before your mind that you cannot get through. I don't care if it's finances. I don't care if it's, if it's dogs and cats chasing you up and down the street. I'm telling you today that the enemy does not do anything but puff himself up. Like them little old cartoons. Tom and Jerry. And that fist gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, the more air you add to it, the softer the punch. That's why they'd rather not have them boxing gloves on in a boxing match. But they don't have them, they kill each other. The enemy wants to make you look like it's just some big thing. I mean, like, hey, Gina. Huh. Hey, devil. Go home. Sister Dalton, I'm going to tell you what. The enemy is hiding behind the walls of its principalities. Because it believes more in what God can do through you. I'm mean, I not mean to say this in the wrong way. It believes more of what God can do through you than you believe he can do through you. We sit there and face it because we're so, we're so headstrong determined to do it by might and by power and by strength and not by the Lord. And the devil's saying, Sister Johnson, the day that you wake up and see what you can do, I'm done. My reign is over in your territory. As long as the walls are standing, he's got victory. But he knows that his hours are numbered. Let me tell you, the devil knows that the day is going to come, that judgment's going to fall upon him from the heavenly throne. He's going to be wrapped up, tangled up, and thrown into the lake of fire forever and ever and ever. Amen. It's going to be over for him. But I'm going to tell you what, the enemy already knows that there is power within the church to bind on earth what is bound in heaven. There is power to speak to the devil and resist him and he'll flee from you. There is power to bind his very tongue, his very hand. But not whenever you think the wall is too great for your work. We need to get a power and anointing. You see, I believe there was a reason why the Lord told them. 
He said, now in the morning, you're going to cross over Jordan, and there are going to be seven trumpets prevailing and blowing. And the ark will come, and the priests will carry the ark on their shoulders, and the, and the army guys will be up front, and in the very back is going to be all the people. There's a bunch of people. Look, there was three to four million Jews. Y'all, did you see that walking into the mall right now? What kind of bargains they walk out with? Sorry. Three to four million, three to five million Jews, something like that. But I'm going to tell you something. This is how the enemy is given its opportunity. Silence is confidence. Silence is confidence. You see, when the enemy walks up and goes, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. That messes the devil up. Because see, uh, the, the enemy... Let me give you a psychological lesson about the devil. He has no power. But he loves to argue. And he argues by messing with your mind. And he argues when you confess what he speaks. You rotten, good for nothing, dirty, low down. However you respond, it either looses him or binds him. It either strengthens him or weakens him. Oh, I know. I'm just horrible. I'm going to get there. I'm going to, I'm going to keep trying. I'm the enemy just got stronger. Then he's going to come back again. I'm going to take your money, Sister Johnson. I, I'm going to take all your cash and I'm going to give it to somebody. I'm going to give it to your sister. See how you like that? On and on and on and on the devil plays these games. The Lord said, I'm going to tell you what I want you to do. I want you to get out there and I want you to keep your mouth shut. And it's going to mess the devil up. You just get out there and you walk. We're declaring the victory by the trumpets up front. The priests are playing the trumpets. And that's declaring our victory. I go and plant the flag, so to speak, in the, in, the, in the legions of heaven. By the sound of the trumpet, we are declaring victory. We're not saying... A, no, I believe it's like this. And all the rest of the people are going, I march to the drumbeat of Jesus while the world hears a different sound. Come on, I believe it's a trumpet of Jesus playing. I believe it's playing. It's declaring your victory before you ever get there. The Bible says He would be your horn. You didn't know that, did you? In other words, before you ever show up, He's playing your song. All you got to do is shut your mouth because your mouth is full of flesh. Your flesh is weak. And whenever your flesh is weak and it begins to speak, it begins to agree with your enemy. You need to learn how to just say, Okay, God, you said to walk before thee. All right, let's go, Lord. Walking around the walls. Why? Because I'm moving the walls. I don't know how it worked out, sister. But you know, maybe every day it just kind of shrunk a little bit, 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 a little bit. I have no idea. I wasn't there. I believe it. I'm not that old. Neither are you. I know the Bible says they fall flat. That's fine. I got no problem with that. But I believe in the spirit world every time they made a lap. I mean, it may not have been too much. You know, Jericho, I don't know how big Jericho was, but, but it had 24-foot walls. But I just, just imagine. Go to the house and eat. And then what, next day, get up. Go to the house and eat. Man, these people are already scared. Rahab all admitted it. They all frightened all. What are them people doing? Get back over the house and eat. Six days they blowed the trumpet. Six days they marched around Jericho. Six days. Can you imagine? Them people in the city. 
looking over the wall. Now, this is a dumb thing I don't understand. Why didn't they throw something at them? I mean, that's just me. This is just me, Sister Jess. I'd have threw a tomato or something just to, just to try to get somebody to holler. I, I'd, have done, I'd have poured a pot of water out or a pot of something else in one of them rooms on the outside walls. That I just, just kind of want to see if that... Let me tell you something. Whenever you shut up and let Jesus talk, He does some talking. Hello? Whenever you just stand there and will let God do His thing. I told somebody, somebody called me the other day. They was, Sister Redhouse, I ain't going to tell them who it was, uh, but, but it, it was one of them phone calls. <laughs> Pastor! Yes. <laughs> Calm down. But you don't understand. <laughs> it's all. And then, and then they said, we don't like this. And, and then he said, and then I said, and then they said, and then they got the book out and read it where I said it and repeated it back to me. And oh my goodness, I just don't know what to do. <laughs> so when's the last time you prayed about it? Well, I've been kind of praying about it, but I've been talking about it. Go to the church. Don't leave till you touch God. They did. Came up here and they prayed for a while. Called me back. Whole different attitude, but still a little less. I said, I'll tell you what you do. Go back to that place and do exactly what they tell you to do and don't say a word. Don't say a word. Just keep your mouth shut. The next phone call I got we have victory in the house. Amen. Devil don't like it when you walk on God's promises. The enemy will try to mess with you until you learn to walk on God's promises. Anybody in here got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, been baptized in Jesus' name? Anybody in here walk, living for God? Do, you know, you, you, make your, you may not be perfect, but I get up every morning, I pray about it. I ask God to forgive me every day. And the Bible says His mercies are renewed daily. I'm telling you what greater is He that's within you than He that's in the world. And when you believe that, See, I don't know, I don't know when it clicked with the children of Israel. But sometimes you just gotta walk and shut your mouth. It's not easy. Sister Amaya, this is where sometimes I'd make a joke and say it's harder for women than it is men, but I'm not gonna do that tonight. Because it's hard for everybody to learn how to shut their trap and let God do his work. It is. I mean, think about it. Why do I need to think about whether or not God is going to overcome my enemy? Why do I, The Bible says He gave me a comforter. I was filled with the Holy Ghost. I don't need to pick up the phone and call anybody about it. Because I know that He that promised is faithful. Does not the Word of God tell you that He'll supply all of your needs according to His riches in glory? Not her riches, not His riches, not my riches. He ain't going to supply many needs of my riches. But I'm going to tell you what. I got a God, the Bible says He owns a cattle on a thousand hills, and the secret is He owns the hills too. He owns the gold and the silver. And he owns the black gold. And he owns the tea and everything else. He owns it all. We've got to recognize that. Wait a minute. Whose God do you serve? You want to serve the God of the Amorites who you wiped out on the other side of Jericho? Or do you want to serve the God that sent you into Jericho and gave you the victory? The God's on the other side of the Jordan River. Weren't big enough to powerful enough to do anything. The gods of, of the Edomites was not powerful enough to deliver anybody. Yet, some people are so stupid, they're going to get on their knees and bow down and worship them. We've got to have our mindset, Jericho, you're just a stumbling block along the way. But when the walls fall, that victory is ours. That victory is the Lord. And He gave it to us, that makes it ours. Let me just help out a little something real quick, okay, can I? 
too many times because we don't want to I'm trying to say this in the right way we don't want to seem like we've done anything God we, we got this mentality I, I do too I'm real bad about it I'm really bad about it that you know we want to be humble and quiet God has a praise for everything which is true don't misunderstand me that's true but I can't tell you a secret if God gave you the gift of knowledge and wisdom and understanding of how to build wicker baskets and you became the wicker basket salesman of the world and you became a multi 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 millionaire because you sold wicker baskets can't tell you a secret ain't nothing wrong with saying I make wicker baskets for a living God, God gave me the talent but he gave it to me, and with what he gave me, this is what I did with it. You see, you've got the power to speak. You've been received the Holy Ghost. It's long time for you learn to do something with it. Amen. Ephesians 3 and 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we can ask and or think, according to the power that worketh within you. Amen. I don't know if I got any power. Every time the devil comes a call and I go a squalling. Mm -mm. Devil, you just go and blow your little fist up. I got a bobby pin to take care of that. Go ahead. <laughs> Boom! I mean to tell you, the devil is a liar and the father of it. He ain't never said nothing about you that's true. You know that? He's never said anything about you that's true. He's he, he doesn't want you to make it. He doesn't want you to have the promised land. He doesn't want David to establish Jerusalem. He doesn't want the temple to be built. He doesn't want none of that to go on. So he puts a Jericho there with big, thick walls, and they're all scared inside. On the seventh day, we're just going to walk. One time. Two times. Three times. Four. Something's getting exciting. Five. And six times around the gates they went. And then they went home at eight. No. They did not. The Bible says on the seventh time. The command was given. And said shout. For God hath given you the victory. There comes a point in every battle and you just sit there and shut up and let God do it. And then all of a sudden God's going to say, praise me. Throw your hands up and praise me. Because I've done giving you the victory. Amen. To let out a shot of victory. Devil, you're a liar and the father of it. I'm going to tell you what, a moving and a shaking and a breaking. The Bible says the walls fell flat and they walked in and destroyed all that was there. I'm telling you today that you need to stop looking at how big the wall is and start looking at how big God is. It may not be time to praise yet. It got to the midnight hour for Paul and Silas. Hit their, hit their mark. You know, when you get that, that certain sound of moving, that certain level of faith moving, you begin to touch God, and you and God begin to touch your problem. I'm going to tell you what, whenever you begin to just trust God, and you give your life to God, and you'll serve God, I promise you what, there is no devil in hell, and there's no wall that's ever been built that you can't overcome. If you'll trust Him. If you'll have enough faith in Him to let Him do His thing, in His time. Oh, God! I thought that on the first day you'd have made the walls go away. But on the second day, the lawyer was still calling me. And on the third day, my children still didn't love me. And on the fourth day, the roof of my house was still leaking. And on the fifth day, And on the sixth day, God's waiting for you to get some faith. 
somewhere along the line, you just say, wait a minute. God said it. That settles it. God said it. That settles it. It's settled because he said. He picked up his phone. He rang me and he said, walk, go. I'm going to give you the city. Well, we ain't even stepped out there one time. God said, I'm going to give you the city. Joshua, hey, going to give you the city. Okay. But you know what? I guarantee there's a lot of people in their mind. Hmm. Yeah, buddy, here we go around the wall one more time. How many days till he tells me he's going to blow the... How many days till he tells me to shout? Don't worry about it. I've told this to you before. But Brother Hodges, in insurance sales, cold call insurance sales, they tell you every tenth door you knock, you'll sell them. Watch this. I knock on this door. They slam the door in my face. That's one-tenth of a sale. I knock on this door. They ask me to please get off their property. That's two-tenths of a sale. I knock on this every time that you trust God and you're a little closer. You've got to go through those strips around the city and around the city. Why? Because God is trying to build you up to the place where He can bless you. He's trying to get you built up to the place where you can praise Him. You know what? Whenever I get to about the number six door, I'm getting excited because I know of only four left and i got a sale. Well, Brother Dunn, I went down there for prayer during that healing service and... I... Nothing... I, not, I, I didn't get healed. I'm going to the house, suck my thumb. I'll go to the doctor another 40 or 50 times. I'll go to the psychiatrist every day. I'll, I'll drag my kids to where... But, uh, you know, I did that healing thing one time. It didn't work. Or not a... By your stripes we are healed. Let me walk down there again and get prayed for again. That's what the Bible teaches us. That's what the Bible teaches us. And we are to continue to work steadfastly, to not be giver-uppers. We're supposed to be the ones that, uh, that, that endure until the end. That's the ones that's going to be saved. I'm going to tell you what, if the, if the children of Israel had walked off after six days of walking around Jericho, and after five times or six times walking around on the seventh day, and they didn't give that shout of praise, I'm going to tell you what, their Jericho would have never fell. Don't Quit until the walls move. Don't quit. Just do it. God said do it. Do it. I believe you, Lord. Here we go. I believe you, Lord. Don't, 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 don't. I hear you up there on that wall telling me to stop and how silly this is. I know that's real rocks. I know that's real stones. I'm going to walk anyway. Well, Pastor Joshua, when they going to get here with a D9 dozer? It ain't showing up. Be a lot easier with some dynamite. Ain't going to happen. You are the wall mover. You, me, we are the wall movers. And it's time that we start walking around some walls that we have allowed to exist in our life. I'm going to have victory. I'm going to walk around these walls. And God has done declared this victory to me. I'm going to walk around them until I see them fall flat. I'm going to shout when God tells And whenever I get it in my mind that I've got, I'm going to begin to praise God. And the walls are going to come tumbling down. And guess what? I got all that real estate when that happens. I, got, I can wipe all the enemies out. I can get rid of that forever and ever and ever. And it will never show its ugly face again. We need some victory today. Amen? We need some ever life-changing, never going back again victory over the stuff in our minds, over the sin of our lips and our hands. Oh, I'm telling you what. God give you peace in your soul. God give you deliverance like you've never dreamed of before if you'll just walk with Him. If you believe that, won't you stand to your feet and let's talk to God tonight. Lord, I love you, Jesus.